Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at this assembly. Now, if you can see that, the motor does look like it is sagging here in the rear end. And that is true because what has happened is this motor got so hot that it essentially welded itself to this electric ducted fan case. And during that process, the motor ended up melting the case to a point where it actually now is hanging down. Ultimately, in this video, we're gonna see if this motor is okay. When I inspect the motor visually here, I can see that the windings inside of this motor may look like they have been burnt. Now, we'll ultimately be able to determine if they have once we get this shroud off of the motor and free it up. So the way that I'm gonna do this is, I'm gonna try and heat the crap out of the front end to try and soften up the plastic and release the motor from this case. Let's give it a try and see if we can release the case. So it does look like I've just been able to do that. The plan did work. I was able to release that plastic shroud from the motor. Now we can actually inspect what's going on with this motor a little bit more clearly. So I'm gonna let this cool off a little bit. The motor case is warm, but the shaft is quite hot because we had quite a bit of heat there surrounding that motor shaft. One of the things I do have to point out here, and I did feel this when the motor was in the case, is when I rotate the actual shaft of the motor, it is actually quite difficult to rotate it. It does feel like something here is binding. I would expect that maybe it has something to do with the bearings, but we're gonna have to dig deeper and figure out what that is. Okay, I think I see a little bit as to what is happening here with this assembly. I ended up pulling on the shaft and it did relieve the shaft of the the pressure that I was feeling before. Now it's a lot easier to rotate the motor can and this is quite normal now, the amount of force that I have to use in order to rotate the shaft. What I do notice though is when I push on the front of the motor, it actually pushes the end bell out the back a little bit. That's not what you want to typically see. However, with these types of motors, it looks like these motors are not actually pinned at the back, so this is not the design that I would prefer. I would definitely want the end cap that is placed on the back side of this motor pinned so that it's fastened and locked into position. Essentially what happens with this type of motor is they use some sort of glue to make certain that the end cap is held into position. However, when that glue fails, this is what happens. Now we can actually push the end cap out the back a little bit just by putting a little bit of pressure here on of the shaft. What is interesting about this type of motor design is I would never place this type of motor with a force that can actually press the shaft in. So you can imagine having a pusher prop style configuration would do exactly that. A boat, a radio control boat application would also do that, putting pressure here on the motor shaft because all the power is transmitted right through the prop shaft and into the flex cable into the motor. So that's something that you do have to be careful of when you're searching for a motor for those specific applications. All right, what I decided to do as I'm not yet able to get that front shaft off, I'm gonna go and throw it into the assembly to see if we can measure the actual KV of this brushless motor. Now when we do this, we're first gonna figure out how fast this drill is spinning, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the KV. We're gonna do this on all three phases just to make certain that we have all the proper measurements to ultimately determine if this motor is okay electrically or not. We're gonna be able to get all the information we need to determine that in just about a minute. So let's go ahead and fire up the drill. First thing I'm gonna do is throw it over to our frequency measurement, and I'm gonna spin up the drill here. So we have now our frequency for that phase. We're gonna use that frequency for every measurement that we do. I'm gonna switch over to AC voltage and I'm gonna test our first phase here. About 0.329 is what I saw. We're gonna switch up the lead and we're gonna measure our second phase now. Point 0.329 is what I see on this phase. Now we're gonna to swap to the last phase and we're gonna measure this phase now. Here we go. So 
So right around that 0 0.327, 326, 329 area. Not too bad, it does seem like the values there are quite tight, they're quite consistent for what I would expect from a motor that has essentially been overheated from too much current being pulled through it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw all those values into the KV calculator to determine if this motor is a 1080 KV motor still. So that's the rating and specification as it is printed on the side of the can. We're going to determine if that is still true from our actual measured result. And if we do find out that it is of the same KV, that essentially means electrically our motor is okay, as well as the magnet that is found on the rotor too. We're going to take a look here under the information tab. We go to the brushless motor efficiencies and constants and measuring motor RPM. What we want to do here is convert the frequency that we ended up seeing in the video there and our frequency for today we're going to have is 47.15 we know the motor pull count is four and we're going to calculate that motor rpm we're going to copy the 1415 value and we're going to go to the other calculator so this is now going to the brushless motor kv measuring motors kv we're gonna to go to the very bottom. Calculator here at the bottom is the drill method that we had used in the video, and we want to determine a brushless motor's KV value. This is the calculator to do so. We can go ahead and drop our drill RPM that we just calculated into the appropriate spot, and then we take the voltages from the video, 0 0.328, 0 0.329, 0 0.327, and we can calculate what the actual KV value is. So we get a jump screen a little high, we scroll down a bit, and we get the brushless motor KV value equal to 3211.5. This is a massive warning sign because what's happening here is our specification on the side of the motor was 10 80 and this is obviously three times larger or so that's very alarming it tells us there's a big problem let's head back over to the motor and see if we can determine what's actually causing this we're back here at the desk on a different day and we ultimately want to determine why is our brushless motor kv three times higher than it should have been according to the factory specifications well, if you remember earlier in the video, we did take a look at the windings in our brushless motor. And now that all the components have been removed here from our motor, we can very clearly see inside of the case. Now, if you get a good shot there, you can see that these windings are definitely dark in color. And this does suggest that they have gotten quite hot. Now the results that we received here are quite interesting because the voltage difference there was about 5 millivolt if I remember correctly. And because of that intense consistency there between each one of those phases on a motor that we know has gotten quite hot, I would not expect that any of those phases have shorted out with a wind within its own phase or from one phase to another phase. And because of that, we should continue our search to ultimately determine what is going on with this KV value. I'm gonna introduce a couple components here. This is a rotor that comes from a motor. If you don't remember, this is about a year ago where we've investigated a motor and what happened with it. Well, this specific motor, it had the Kevlar windings that hold those mega magnets on nice and tight so that they don't eject themselves at high RPM. That ended up breaking, causing the magnets to actually eject themselves. And when they did eject, they ended up seizing the motor while that plane was in flight. We took it apart and that's what we had determined. These magnets had not been damaged, so these magnets are in good condition. Now I'll introduce here the rotor from our motor here today. Now typically the wrap on these brushless motors are more of like a green type of color. What we see here on this specific rotor is more of a brown or burnt color. This does suggest to us that this rotor got hot to the point where the Kevlar was not happy. And that is concerning because underneath of this Kevlar wrap is the magnets on our rotor. Now those magnets, just like any other magnet, if you get them too hot, you can actually demagnetize the magnets found on our rotor. And this depends on the temperature that the rotor actually hits. So a very, very, very high temperature, well above the threshold, 
could demagnetize the magnets completely. However, if you don't get it to that temperature, maybe it's just a few degrees past the maximum threshold, then you may see a very minor amount of demagnetization, maybe only a few percent. So it really ultimately depends where you ended up in terms of temperature range throughout that demagnetization zone. So one of the things that I want to do here in the video is ultimately determine using very simple tools, is this rotor okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the strength dif difference of our rotor here that we know is okay versus the rotor that we are questioning. So the way that I'm gonna do this is very carefully because anytime you're dealing with these types of magnets or rotors, you want to make sure that you don't bring them to something to the point where it can snap. There's a lot of force within these magnets and you wanna make sure that you're doing it using the right techniques. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rotor and I'm gonna use this hammer because it's a nice solid chunk of metal and I'm going to see how strong this rotor is when I bring it close to the hammer. However, what I make sure not to do is let the magnet slam onto the hammer. The way I'm going to do that is by using a technique where my fingers actually make contact with the rotor first. And then as I create a larger opening, the rotor is going to get closer and closer to the hammer until now I can feel it really pulling and it's just a fraction of a centimeter away and now it is now engaged onto the rotor. So this is the point where now I can find out the strength and ultimately be able to feel that strength and compare it against our other rotor. I'm using the corner of the hammer so that I can minimize the amount of metal that the rotor is contacting. If I were to slide it over on the side of the hammer, so this is now using a greater surface area, the head of the hammer, I'm gonna have a lot greater force to here pull away from. And I don't need to use that kind of force. I can minimize it by just using a corner. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with both of these rotors. So if I pull this rotor away very carefully, I could feel that there's quite a bit of force there. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing here with our damaged rotor, at least we're expecting this to be damaged because we do have this off color here. And I'm gonna bring this very carefully again to the hammer. And I don't feel much of anything at this point. I don't even feel anything at all. So I don't feel much going on in the way of strength here. Very interesting, it wants to actually slide away from the center. I'm getting like no magnetization at the end here. You see that? That tells us something really bad and that tells us that that magnet is essentially gone on the end. But as I bring it closer to the other side of this magnet, now I'm starting to get some more magnetic pull. And there's not much there in comparison to the other. I really don't need to hold this back. There's not much strength happening even on the good side of the magnet. So I've never actually seen this before where one strip of a magnet is actually demagnetized almost completely on one side versus the other side. It is much stronger on this side and I literally have nothing going on on this side of the magnet. Now that we've been able to confidently understand what is happening within our brushless motor that led to this higher KV being measured, I want to be able to relate that KV concern to the magnets that we ended up seeing here. The relationship for the motor KV versus the strength of the magnets goes by a stronger magnet is going to produce a lower KV value. The efficiency of that motor is going to increase, allowing us to actually get a lower KV, which is probably maybe opposite of what you thought, but you'd get a lower KV out of the motor if our magnetic strength is higher. So essentially what happens to us is because our magnet is actually demagnetized and has gotten quite lower, we are getting a higher KV. And this tells us that we would not be able to run this motor on the voltage that we originally putting through this motor. What's gonna happen is it's going to try and spin a lot higher of an RPM, but it simply cannot do so without pulling a ton more current. And it's going to be essentially this perpetual damaging cycle that you put the motor through until it ultimately just fails and goes to zero. And if the magnets demagnetize further, we would see yet another increase in the KV value. So the motor's gonna try and pull even more current from the same setup. And you can see it's this almost perpetual cycle that's gonna ultimately lead to a complete failure within that motor where the windings are next on the chopping block. And once the windings go out, then it becomes dangerous because it can take your ESC out. And having one dead component is a lot better than having multiple dead components. 
components. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video where we've been able to go through the entire process, ultimately finding out what is wrong with this brushless motor. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.